How's it going guys? I'm Danny and this is your comprehensive guide on what disc golf discs do. What makes this disc different from this disc? Let's get into it. Actually, I need those. Okay, so there are four overarching types of discs, and they are classified based on speed. They are drivers, fairway drivers, mid ranges, and putters. Now, the difference from a driver to a mid range is the rim. The discs that are designed to go farther, so drivers, have a wider rim that is thinner, but as you get towards slower discs, you'll see the rim gets a little bit fatter this way and it becomes thinner this way. Now a disc is gonna fly on whatever angle it's on. So if a disc is angled like this while it's flying, it's gonna curve this way. Or if it's angled like this, it's gonna curve that way. And the wider rim discs are going to take bigger curves. So slower discs are easier to get to go straight. If I wanna throw this disc straight, I need to throw it so it flips over like this and it comes back and it's gonna have about 50 feet of deviance in it. But if I wanna throw this disc, the mid-range straight, I can throw it just flat and it's gonna go flat and it's only gonna fade off a little bit at the end. That's why slower discs fly straighter. It can be also helpful to think of speed as a requirement. It requires a certain amount of power to throw this really fast disc and have it fly far. It's much easier to throw this disc because it's slower and it's a fairway driver. It's not going to require as much power. If I'm not trying to throw as far as I can, I'm probably gonna get a better result out of this disc. Or if you're a newer player and you don't have a lot of arm speed, you can't throw very far, you're going to see much better results out of a slower disc, like a, like a slower fairway driver or maybe even a mid-range because it's not going to deviate as much from that path and it's gonna be easier to, to get the required speed. Now one of the biggest differences between speeds of discs is the amount of nose down that they require. Slower discs will forgive a nose up release easier. So if you throw a mid range with a little bit of nose up on it, it's not going to fly that much different than if it was nose down. But if you throw a driver and it's a little bit nose up, it's going to fly vastly different. So slower discs will forgive the nose up. But that's also encouraging because if you take a faster disc that you might not have the arm speed for and you can throw it nose down, you're going to get a very good flight out of that disc. It's going to fly almost like it would if, if you had the arm speed for it. But if you can get the nose down, you will get a much better flight out of it. So speed is the biggest difference between discs. Arguably the second biggest difference is stability. Now stability is a spectrum. It ranges from overstable to understable, and there's lots of different terms for where the middle area is, so I'll try and cover those. But in general, a more stable disc is going to be more overstable, and a less stable disc is going to be more understable. Stability refers to how much a disc resists turning when it's fully powered. So like I said, step one is to meet the speed requirement. If you're not throwing the disc hard enough, it's not going to fly like it's supposed to. If you take a disc that is not stable, this is an understable disc, this is a Renegade, it's a driver, so it requires a good bit of speed, but if it's fully powered, it will turn during its flight and it will flip, it will change the angle that it's on. This is a bad example because this one's beat up, but this disc. This is a Defender. This is a little bit faster than a Renegade, but this disc is overstable. Even if I meet the speed requirement for this disc, it's not going to flip over because it has that stability to resist turning. A stability is a spectrum. Some discs are gonna resist turning more than others. This is my overstable disc. This is slightly overstable. This one's a little bit straighter. Can't find the understable one, but it's around here somewhere. And the faster a disc is, the faster it's going to flip. So if I have an understable mid-range here, and I throw it on a hyzer, it's gonna turn fairly slowly the whole time it's flying. It's gonna give me a nice, smooth, controlled flight, and I'm gonna be a lot more accurate with this slower disc. 
But if I take an understable driver, like this Renegade again, it's going to flip fairly quickly out of my hand, but then it's gonna glide and hold that angle for a long time. All right, so next is glide. Glide refers to the amount of lift that a disc has. A glidier disc is going to stay in the air longer when it's thrown than a less glidey disc. I wish we had a better word than glidey. Doesn't sound right. Glideful, glidus. I guess glidey is probably the best one. Now in general, a less stable disc is going to glide more than a more stable disc. This means less stable discs are going to go a lot further, but they're not going to be as accurate. If you're trying to throw far, you definitely want to choose a glidey disc because that disc is going to hang in the air and give you the extra distance. A glide is definitely related to stability. A more overstable disc is almost always going to glide less than a more understable disc. So when you're trying to throw for distance, it's a good idea to pick a disc that you know will get some turn out of it and will glide and get its full flight and get you that extra distance. So last is fade. Fade refers to how much a disc hooks up at the end. So discs are spinning, right? They have gyroscopic stability. That means that while they're flying, the wind is rushing over them and holding them flat. But as they start to slow down at the end of their flight, they're still spinning. And when things are spinning, they want to flip vertical. So if this disc has a clockwise spin for a right-hand backhand shot, it's going to start to turn vertical at the end of its flight. And because it's changing this angle, it's going to start to fade to the left. That's why discs fade, and that's why it's a good idea to have a clockwise and a counterclockwise throw. So I throw backhand for most of my shots, but I can throw a forehand because it will make the disc curve the other direction. It will have that counterclockwise spin, and it will cause the disc to fade to the right. This is another reason it's good to throw slower discs if you're trying to throw straight. A faster disc is going to fade more. Because of the way the rim is shaped, the faster disc as it fades is gonna go about 50 feet further left than a slower disc will. There it is. Sometimes you will see a disc not fade. This is because it flips over and it hits the ground before it has a chance to. This is a Renegade, this is a fairly understable disc. So if I throw this disc way up in the air, it's gonna ride this Anheuser angle all the way to the ground. Now, if it didn't hit the ground there, if I like threw it over the Grand Canyon, it would come and it would eventually fade back but it just hit the ground first. So if you're trying to throw a shot that holds to the right and isn't going to fade left, you wanna pick an understable disc that has low fade. But if you're throwing and you throw the disc nose up, that's going to take a lot of the speed off of a disc while keeping the rotation. So if you throw a shot that's too high or too nose up, it's going to fade a lot sooner. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think on Facebook or on YouTube and until next time, remember slow is smooth and smooth is far.